why is that person's fingers like lightning is because they never hit the same spot twice. Hello, my name is Christian Kim. I'm the lead of violin at Tonebass. Having a solid left hand setup is truly one of the big challenges as violinists. The left hand being responsible for intonation, shifting, vibrato and everything in between. So the big question is, how can we facilitate more consistency in all of these aspects? One concept that comes up over and over again is having a consistent left hand frame. Therefore, we'll watch some short clips taken from courses on tone base in which some of our renowned artists, Igor Pickeisen, Philip Pogadi, Fabiola Kim, Stefan Zakif, James Innes, and Pinker Zuckerman share some of their thoughts on this concept in different contexts. Now this is always to be one straight line. You often see beginning violinists try to hoist the violin up with the wrist like this or push it back. No, the wrist is always in a straight line. To the outside observer, this is one line. It's only your fingers that are doing the work. And along the same lines, the audience should never see the inside of your palm. The legendary David Oistrich, uh, whenever anyone in his class would play with the palm open, would come up to them and put a few coins in the inside of their palm to signify that they were playing like a street violinist without proper technique. By the way, some street violinists are absolutely amazing. I just wanted to point it out as a funny little anecdote. Going back to violin positioning, straight line, palm always facing inward, and the fingers in a natural arc, right? They shouldn't do this, they shouldn't go down. And you also shouldn't elevate your elbow that your fingers are at too high of an angle. In his course on scales, Igor Pickeisen addresses some fundamentals regarding left-hand setup, and I want to point out three aspects he mentions. The audience should never see the inside of your palm, fingers in a natural arc, and only the fingers are doing the work. Addressing the first point, having the palm facing towards the fingerboard really widens the left hand comparatively to the fingerboard and then enables all four fingers to be in a natural arc in the first place. Pig isn't saying that only the fingers do the work means that we want to keep the left hand itself steady and calm in this position instead of adjusting the hand position depending on which finger you're currently using. Let's see what Philip Pogadi has to say in this clip from his course on arm vibrato. When I vibrate, I like my hands set up sort of sideways, this way. So the fingernails are actually looking over to the side and they're not really facing me. So almost like a guitar player when he holds the guitar, right? So it's sort of sideways like that. I find that very helpful because it allows me to go sideways as well a little bit, which is helpful for the rolling motion. Also, I like my fingers pretty flat because that way you can get more surface to roll your fingers about even more. When I vibrate, I keep space here between the first finger and the fingerboard. So the only contact points really are the thumb and the tip of the finger, whichever is vibrating, right? So first finger, you see, you can, I can look at you right there through, through that gap that I create, second finger, third, fourth. My suggestion is really going sort of around. And remember I was telling you about keeping your hand sideways. That's also very helpful for the fourth finger because for me, the fourth finger has to go sort of around. It doesn't just go straight into the string like that, yeah? It goes, it's sort of curved around and I lean on the outer edge of the fourth finger this way, you see? And that gives my finger much more structural strength. Like, it's just not gonna collapse this way. This way, somehow, it just goes right into this kind of collapsed mode, yeah? But if I go sort of around and I curve it and I lean on the outer edge like this, it just doesn't collapse for some reason. And I've tried this with many students of mine, it always works. Here, Philip Pogadi again mentions the importance of going around, as he calls it, with the hand to even facilitate a rounded pinky that has more structural strength on the string for vibrato, for example. Again, emphasizing the importance of a good left hand setup is Professor Fabiola Kim in a clip from her course on shifting. I want to talk a little bit about 
a general hand frame, and, and, and this will be relevant to shifting. Our most universal basic hand frame between your first finger and the fourth finger on the same string is a perfect fourth. For example, that's a perfect fourth. Of course, depending on a key, that's going to change. And that's going to affect how you decide which note to go to with your guide finger. That perfect fourth between one and four did not change. Professor Kim brings here a new facet to this concept of a consistent left hand frame. Because if the frame stays consistent while shifting, also the fingers are more predictable in where they will fall after the shift, which ultimately can lead to more consistent intonation. Our next clip is by Stefan Jarkiv from his course on double stops and scales. It is one thing to play one note in tune. It is much more valuable for your hand to learn a position where it can play multiple notes in tune simultaneously. That's what double stops allows you to do. So it kind of creates a framework for your hand where more than one note can be in tune simultaneously. And by playing double stops, at least two notes are in tune simultaneously, hopefully. Another useful one is octaves. Octaves are played with first and fourth fingers, so that's sort of the outer, outer bounds of your hand that creates a reliable framework. Same bowing. So first. And then. comfortable. Slow and accurate is the key. Now this is in essence a continuation of previous aspects. If you can put down all four fingers on one string in good posture and intonation, the next step is being able to do this across several strings with for example one octave being the outer edges of that same frame, first and fourth finger, but on two different strings. The next clip is from Maestro Zuckerman's course Exploring the Great Violin Concertos. Bye. That's always third finger, even first position. You don't need to pick up the hands. What Mr. Galami called the frame. The frame, by doing the left, uh, sorry, the, the, the big finger here, the third finger together, it leaves the frame in the power place. So this is very good. I really... Here, Maestro Zuckerman demonstrates wonderfully a couple of aspects we talked about previously. Some shifting application in a Yost-style shifting exercise, and the famous opening octaves of the Beethoven Violin Concerto. Last, but certainly not least, James Innes on how a consistent hand frame informs his practice from his course on tone base, practice principles. In order to build consistency, if the shape of your hand is consistent, then the fingers are going to go in the same places. If you are always sort of swimming around the instrument, it just it gives too many variables. And uh, you know, there's the old joke about you know why why is that person's fingers uh, like lightning? Is because they never hit the same spot twice. Uh, we want to avoid that, and I think a big part of that is understanding the shapes. If the hand goes here, 
then the fingers are all right there. And of course, that is not going to always be so simple, but it's an awfully good place to start. If you're missing a note consistently, it is very likely because the hand shape is changing. You might feel like I'm putting that finger in exactly the same spot, but somehow it's not landing in exactly the same spot, and that's because the position of the hand is not consistent. And thinking about hand shape, and in thinking about finding a note that is not necessarily the ultimate destination, consider this very difficult part in the third movement of the Sibelius Concerto. So that right there, that F sharp, I might have a decent idea of where that F sharp is going to be, but I have a very good idea of where the A is going to be. I know where that note is. That's a simple one for whatever reason for me. I know how to do that. And then I know how that fits on top of it. So when I think of that passage, I don't think, here we go, going up to an F sharp. I think of it, we're going to the A. And then I know where the notes are on top of that. And that for me is a more consistent solution. Here James addresses one aspect that is very crucial. When we talk about a left hand frame, it is not about having our hand always locked in a perfect fourth interval between first and fourth finger, but utilizing this consistent hand frame as a reference point that in return informs all the acrobatics we will do and which may absolutely go beyond that initial frame. The concept and security of a consistent frame is being the safe haven of all your left hand adventures.